मैंने बंद कर दिया अब जैसे इस स्लाइड का वहां आ जाएगी स्मूथ आ जाएगी स्मूथ आ जाएगी मैं गोला इंटर हूं सर जैसी मैं कर दूंगा मैं आपको ये दे दूंगा ठीक है उसके बाद आप ऊपर नीचे वो करते रहिएगा इसी से तो स्लाइड्स के ऊपर मैं एक्टिव कर दूंगा ठीक है सिर्फ स्लाइड दिखाई दे गया आपका चेहरा दिखाई नहीं देगा हम्म ठीक है Hello and welcome to the session. In today's session, we will discuss about combinational circuits. What are these? Why we want to discuss about them, and what are the importance of these kinds of things in computing? This particular topic is related to Block One, Unit Three of MCS Twelve, and in addition, in this uh, block, we have referred many textbooks. We have given reference to many textbooks, so you can refer to those textbooks also. In addition to this, right? The basic outline is. we will be discussing about logic gates then we will discuss why we need combinational circuits then we will go to define introduction to circuit design using uh, a typical technique called carnaus map which we have mentioned as k map and then we will be going to drawing the circuits also like how we can draw those circuits and then finally we will discuss about one of the most important circuit that is called an added adder circuit right so this is what i would like to discuss with you in a short span of an hour, around an hour or so now let's begin with but i mean uh, let's start with thinking about why we need combinational circuits right so the very first thing which comes to our mind is that when we deal with computer and and when i described in the first session about the computer organization we also want to discuss how the things are done within the computer right now if i want to know how things are done within the computer then this is the first thing which we need to know that is the combinational circuit right now what do we mean by what is going on well the most basic or elementary level of a computer system is the basic electronics now basic electronics is utilized on on semiconductor chips which most of you may be familiar with the technology semiconductor technologies and on semiconductor conductor conductor technologies what we fabricate is this first basic unit called logic gates from there the whole essence of computer starts in fact the whole computer is implemented with the help of these simple logic gates right then i mean logic gates we will look into the logic gates but they are very 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 elementary units so how logic gates then can be converted into better logic right addition of circuits and so on so forth that is done with the help of combinational design right so this is where our this particular topic combinational circuit design plays a very important role and we would like to study it in more details in that particular sense so let's look into the basic logic gates first now if you can visualize on the screen we have very simple statements or very simple things the first gate which is there is not and what does it do very simply suppose there is an input a now all the inputs in combinational circuits in computer are going to be only binary bits right nothing more than that right so this is bits binary digits only so it can be either 0 or 1 so the first gate this will be implemented in electronics and we don't need to worry about that electronics because then you need to be an electronic person to deal with that particular situation so for us this is what is the basic unit okay so let's look into the not gate what does it do it simply inverts the value right so suppose now truth value truth table is the most important tool to know what a particular function is being done so suppose the value of a was 0 what this gate will do it will simply convert invert this value to 1 that's all so it is a not gate or inversion gate or whatever you call it right but it is simply converting the value of a from 0 to 1 or value of a from 1 to 0 so if you input 0 
if the value of input is 0, it will be inverted to 1. If the value of a is 1, it will be inverted to 0, as simple as that, right? And the algebraic function is f equals to a prime or f equals to a uh, prime, that sign is missing. Normally, we use either the bar or a dash in, instead of it. That dash probably uh, over here is missing, okay? The next gate which is there is AND gate. Now, AND gate takes two inputs. It is implemented with the help of transistors in electronics, right? This is also implemented with the help of transistors in electronics. And you must have studied in unit one itself that large number of transistors, in fact, many million number of transistors can be implemented on a single chip today very large scale integration and ultra large scale integration. This is what is possible today. So maybe one or two gate, one or two transistors are good enough to implement a NOT gate and two to three uh, transistors are good enough to implement an AND gate. So what we see here is A and B. So this is represented as F equals to A and B. There is a dot between or even if you don't include dot, that's perfectly all right. Okay, and how it functions, just like our AND condition in our programming logic, that if we input 0 and 0, we will get a 0, right? So basically false and false used to give us false. So similarly, 0 to 0, 0 and 0, if A and B both are 0, we will get 0. We will get A, the output as 1 only if A and B both are 1. So this is what is the function over here. Now look into the OR gate. OR gate is once again very, very simple, the OR logic which you use in your normal programming to uh, programming language. The only difference here is that this everything is going to be fabricated within the hardware, right? And OR for OR gate, what you can see, 0, 0 will give us 0, 0, 1 will give 1, right? 1 and 0 will give us 1 and 1, 1 will also give us 1. So these are the simple gates, three simple gates. On these three simple gates, three or four more simple gates can be designed and the first one is NAND, right? NAND is actually not AND. So this uh, sign over here basically in implements inverting the AND gate, right? So you simply invert the AND gate to get F A dot B prime and what you see here, what we used to get in AND 0 0 was 0, 0 1 was 0, 0 1 0 was 0 and 1 1 was only 1. Now the whole thing has been inverted. Right? So this is what you can see. So all zeros in the output only, right? Out, all zeros in the output have been inverted to 1 and where there was 1, it is inverted to 0. So it is not AND. So inversion of whatever we get from AND input, just invert that output to get NAND, okay? NOR is similarly inversion of uh, that is OR gate, okay? So in OR gate, we, we got three ones right and all those three ones have got in converted to 0 and for the case of 0, 0 we got it 1. So similarly this is what is the what we have is the NOR gate. Now there is a very interesting gate in addition to NOR. Now what happens in NOR you see if the inputs are same then we are getting a 1 right okay whereas in OR what will say what will you get if inputs are same right? We will get, suppose 1, 1, we get a 0, right? In OR, not in NOR, right? Now, in this particular case, in case of exclusive OR, when the input is 0 and 0, we will get a 0. When the input is 0 and 1, we get a 1. When 1 and 0, we get a 1. So, this is as good as, as we do in OR. But in exclusive OR, the typicality is, if both the inputs are 1, then the output is supposed to be 0. So if one of the input is 1, output will be 1. If all the outputs are same, then the output is going to be 0. So this is a very useful gate and this is called exclusive OR or ZOR gate and it is used at many different places. That's why we have brought in this particular gate for our discussion. So these are simple logic gates, I mean, which can be utilized for further uh, creating complex circuits like adders? How? So let's try to go to that particular domain and this is through combinational circuits. Now why do we do need to have combinational circuits? They are used to design basic functional units of a computer, 
okay so this is what we would like to see how they want uh, they are used okay then gates are interconnected connected to produce a desired output from its input now that is very very important but what is what should be the basis of that interconnection how gates will be interconnected how the diagram will be drawn and it can be expressed by truth table or boolean function so whenever we want to design a circuit the very first thing which we need to do is to design a truth table and on the basis of that truth table we can design the boolean function and we can simplify it with the help of these combinational circuits well there are few design issues also which relates to combinational circuits and the first one is the depth or the number of gates in a sequence should not exceed a specific level reason the output should be obtained with uh, with change in input now what happens suppose we have a long series of of gates every gate will introduce slight delay maybe in in nanoseconds right because uh, cpu operates in nanoseconds but that nanoseconds will accumulate if we have large number of gates connected in sequence right so that is what is going to create some kind of i mean uh, kind of delay in the circuit and we want instantaneous changes okay so that is number one the second thing is the power constraints limits due to power constraints and power constraints is in the form of like we cannot output the, the terms have been given is fan in and fan out you can refer to those particular terms that is number of lines to one gate if there are large number of lines input to one particular gate like for and gate we had two right whereas for inverter we had only one input suppose a gate for a gate we have five six seven inputs then they, that might cause a problem in the power so two three that is the in general of four is normal maximum four is the uh, fan in normally which we norm, uh, try to create and fan out is how many outputs how, how many uh, further gates this particular a uh, gate is going to serve from so from the output what we see we had only one output shown but that particular output can be fed to many gates further and this is typically related to the power of the circuit right so that is why we try to restrict these two roughly 2 3 4 uh, 2 3 uh, maybe that is the kind of limit which we would like to keep now how we represent now this is very important for you to understand we are doing some brass tracks before we actually go to the circuit uh, circuit design also but there is something called sum of product form right whenever we represent our boolean function we represent uh, like boolean function is also a representation of our circuit so boolean function when we represent for example a boolean function is given over there f a b c equals to a dash b c dash c dash over here represents inversion right that is uh, not right inversion and in this particular case a dot b dash now how many variable this function has a b and c now if a term this is an expression total expression and in that expression we have this as a term right so if in this particular term a b and c all are appearing either in normal form b is normal normal i mean b c is b is simple but a dash is inverted form right so either in this normal form or the inverted form they should appear now this becomes the min term whereas this is not because c is not appearing so this is how we define the min term now the why we want to worry about min term because min term has a typical characteristics right and that characteristic is for example this particular circuit if we are designing and this particular term will obtain a value 1 only when a dash equals to 0 that means a is equal to 0 b equals to 1 and c dash equals to 1 that means c equals to 0 and for all other combination this particular term will have a value 0 now this is very very important because this is one is to one match to the truth table that means one min term will be mapped to exactly one term in the truth table now that will lead to lot many good things when we actually design the circuit okay now similarly there is a uh, that is product of some form which is a max term now max term is once again in a similar fashion but in max term everything boils down to zero 
right? So this is represented with the help of plus, whereas min term was with the help of ands, right? This is with the help of or, okay? So this is what you, this is called actually the conjunction and disjunction, but we don't need to worry about those particular terms. That's why we have kept the term simple, okay? Now here, if a equals to 0 and b equals b dash equals to 0 and c equals to 0, only then this value will have a value 0. So for max term, we will obtain a value 0, not 1 as the case was min term. Because min term is and, this is or, so this is where the difference is going to come. And max terms are normally utilized in the same uh, uh, design, same uh, like uh, design, but then Max terms are utilized for some different purpose which we have not explained to a great detail but you can refer to further readings and uh, go through the utilization of max terms. Okay. Now uh, the combination once again what we see over here when a equals to 0, b dash equals to 0 that means b equals to 1 and c equals to 0 this max term will have a value 1 that is all. So these are the two, two terms which you will be finding in all text you will find these values. But what is their importance? What I told about min term was very, very important for you that one min term is equivalent to one uh, entry in a truth table. So we will see that particular thing. Now let us look into the circuit design where we will be using kmap. There may be three, four methods but we won't use algebraic simplification. We will mainly go to Cornau's map and Quinn Maxkluski method has been explained in your uh, blog, but that is only for reference purposes, right? And uh, how to use Karnau's map, we will show with the help of examples. So let us begin the problem, with the problem. So assume <coughs> that you are asked to design a circuit that accepts 4 bits as input and generate an output 1 if the input is an even number else produces an output 0. So this is our problem. This normally is not going to be implemented in, uh, uh, in a circuit design, but just for the sake of explanation, we are using it because we, we are very much familiar with even and odd numbers, right? So we, what we want to see if the input, ha input is even, right, even in terms of uh, decimal number, then it should produce an output 1. Otherwise, it should produce an output 0. So, circuit can be designed to do this particular activity also. So, let us first draw the truth table for it, right? So, there are 4 inputs. So, obviously, there are going to be uh, 15 cases for this, 16 cases starting from 0, 0 to uh, 7, that means 8 cases are listed in this place. So, is 0 uh, 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 that is even number? No, 1 is also not, but 2 is. So you can see there is a 1 in the output. As soon as the, uh, that is the in truth table, it becomes 1, it should be an output. Can you see the min terms in this particular case? This is a min term and this min term is a dash, b dash, c dash, d dash, right? However, in this particular case, output is 0. So the min term for the function which we will be using is going to be, function will have the min term a dash, b dash, c and d dash. So this is one min term which will be part of the function. Second min term which will be part of the function is a dash, b, c dash, d dash like that, okay? So this is, so 2, 4, now uh, in kmap, we do not have to worry about those min terms, right? So 2, 4, 6, they all are having value 1. These are decimal equivalent. Moving to 8, 10, 12, 14, right? So this is what we get, okay? So this is the truth table. Now this truth table is to be mapped into Karnau's map. And this Karnau map is a graphical way of representing the whole information, right? Now, the four variables which we had, a, b and c, d, right? So we have four variables, a, b and c, d. Now, what we see, we are representing a, b in this particular axis and c, d on over here. Now, notice that what these things represent in both the cases. There is a difference of only one between one bit between the two values. For example, from 0, 0, we move to 0, 1. Now, technically from here, we need to go to 1, 0, but 1, 0, there is a difference in two bits. Like this bit is also different and this bit, both the bits are different. So from 0, 1, we move to 1, 1. 
and from 1 1 we once again move, move to 1 0 which is so all these values have are differing in one bit only and cy cyclic nature of this particular representation from 1 0 and 0 0 difference is only in one bit. Now this is this has got many advantages and this advantage will be when you will be seeing this advantage very clearly when we will be seeing the adjacencies. So now our number equivalents right the decimal number equivalent will be 0 0 0 0 is 0 now 0 0 0 1 is 1 and this 0 0 1 0 so 2 is at this particular place and 3 comes 0 0 1 1 3 so this is decimal equivalent 3 like that we get 4 5 6 and 7 then then we get 8 9 10 and 11 in the last row because once again the same logic you can see 1 0 0 0 is 8 right so this is how we get 8 9 you can find out and 12 13 and then 15 and 14 that means 14 here and 15 here now we what we do we map the truth table all the min terms are going to be mapped the ones over here so what you can see the first even number was 2 second even number was 4 third was 6 fourth was 12 was not 12 8 10 12 and 14 right so we have mapped all those places where we had 1 we have mapped a 1 remaining all the places we can map 0 but we have not shown that particular 0 in this particular case if we require some other kind of circuit f dash then we will do the max terms which we are not showing in this particular example now the next thing is to minimize right so the min terms all the min terms have been mapped in this particular case and if if we uh, write all these min terms they will there are seven min terms so the circuit the circuit is going to be very very large our objective is to minimize the number of gates and how you are going to do that some min terms will be combined into equivalent term which which is not going to be min term anymore right but they need to be combined okay so that and how we are going to combine those min terms so that we get minimum number of gates in our simplification simplified boolean function now in order to do that we do adjacency checking and adjacency checking can be across the uh, this particular case also that is last column also last and first column because what we said 1 0 and 0 0 both are adjacent to each other in the sense that they differ only in one bit. So let us look into the adjacencies for these. The first adjacency which we are listing is shown with the help of all red uh, listing ones. Okay. So you can see one typical adjacency all ones are adjacent to each other in the column. Okay. So when now note one particular thing whenever two whenever you will find two of uh, the the cells adjacent then the number of uh, that is uh, variables will be reducing by one if we get four then the number of variables will be reducing by two in the expression which we will be getting and if we get eight suppose there was one here then we would have got adjacency of eight including all these four and all, all these four suppose we have one over there in that case we will reduce three variables in this case we will be reducing three variables now how this is represented okay let us see so what is changing across these a has changed from zero to one is not it from here to here what we see a has changed from 0 to 1 similarly b has changed from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 so b is also b has also changed what has not changed is c across the column and d right which happens to be d dash in particular case right so our equivalent expression which will come out to be 1 since it is 1 so c and this is 0 so that means d dash so these all these four adjacencies all these four uh, what we say min terms have been combined to a like if I if I see this these min terms it is going to be a dash b dash c d prime this is going to be a dash b c uh, c d prime so c d prime will be consistently the same and all these will actually will turn into one so what we will get the output which we will be going or the combined circuit for these four adjacencies is going to be just C D prime. So you need to read more about it. This is very interesting to find the adjacency and re reducing the 
circuit to very very uh, less number of uh, variables right. Now the second adjacency, so this was the first adjacency which we saw. Now the second adjacency fourth once again. So first of all we could have done these two ways once only, these four ones have already been covered but we want to find the maximum adjacency right. So for covering these two ones, these two are not covered so we find the adjacency which is the maximum adjacency that means we have to include these two although they are getting included once again. Now let us see what is not changing across them ok. So see from here. 0, 0 and 1, 0. So what has changed? C from 0 to 1. So we do not have C in this particular case, but D, D prime, right? Because 0 has remained 0, so D prime comes into our term. And what we see in the column side, we have changed. A has not changed, A has remained 1 and B has changed in this particular case. So the determination, so A has not changed and d prime has not changed. So, a d prime is the second term which we will get because of this adjacency. Now, we have actually covered these two, all these four plus these two ones. So, the only thing left is this particular one which is still to be covered in our circuit design. Now, how, this one once again we will use the maximal form to cover this particular one. Right. So that is why we are taking the adjacency for even for this particular one we are taking an adjacency of 4 so that we get the minimum term. Otherwise for this we would have got A prime B C prime D prime but with the adjacency we have reduced the number of terms in uh, number of uh, variables in the term. So what you can see here ok. So what has changed 0 to 1 that is A has changed so A will not appear but B remains 1 so B ok and d prime as the case in this particular case. So b d prime for this particular agency. So what is our final circuit? Okay, the final our expression becomes combination of all these three. So this was the first c d prime, then for these four that is a d prime and then for these four we get b t prime. So this becomes our simple simplified circuit which represents 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Had we used only the min terms, we would have got 7 terms, uh, 7 terms in this particular expression, right. Right. Now we have reduced not only the terms to 3, but also reduced the number of variables also to a great extent. So, for finding even number from 0 to 15, we can draw this particular equivalent circuit equivalent to this particular uh, Boolean function and what we will get? We will get the equivalent circuit. We have not drawn this particular circuit but we will demonstrate how this particular circuit or similar circuits can be, uh, can be drawn. Let us take another example so that this concept of converting the uh, expression the, the, that is the truth well, truth uh, value table yeah, truth table to a particular equivalent function using Carnot's map can be further explained. Okay. So let us look into problem 2. Once again this is also slightly hypothetical problem but let us try to assume that you are asked to design a circuit that accepts 4 bits as input and generates an output 1 if the input is a prime number else produces an output 0. Once again for the simplicity we have used prime numbers because we know but prime numbers will be from 0 to 15 only and this kind of uh, circuit can be drawn but not necessary because we can uh, you, uh, we can draw different kinds of uh, programs, we can create different programs for prime numbers and even numbers right. But for the sake of that how we can do the similar thing using hardware. Okay. Now for prime numbers we once again draw the truth table. So prime numbers are 2 and 3, 1 is not a prime number so we will get 1 here, the prime number is 5 and 7 so you are getting 1's over there, the prime number is then next prime number is 11 and 13 that is how we get our prime numbers. So this becomes our truth table and to map this onto K map for prime numbers. So once again we map them 2, 3, right? then uh, 5, 7, alright, then we have 13 and 11. So 11 and 13, so all have been 
they have been uh, put into one. Now this is a slightly uh, disarray kind of a structure. So you will find we will have uh, lesser optimization in this particular case, but still KMAP is going to give us some optimization. So let us look into two cases at the same at the same time. So what I was talking about the adjacency of two. So these are two different adjacencies of two each. So adjacency one which is shown with the help of red for two and three right. There is no further adjacency because what we see only one here. There is no one here so it is not adjacent right. There is an adjacency over here but that we can cover later on also right. There is no adjacency of four. The, our first objective is to find the maximal adjacency. Because if there is an adjacency of 8, we will find that. If we are not getting adjacency of 8, then we try adjacency of 4. If we do not get adjacency of 4, then we get go to adjacency of 2. Because the more is the adjacency, the more number of bits it will be covering, right? Number 1. Because our objective, one other objective is that we should cover all the bits. It is not that we can leave any of those bits towards the end. So all the bits should be covered in some adjacency, okay. And uh, the, this is first objective and second objective is that we have to find the maximal uh, adjacency as far as possible, okay. So 1 and 2 in this particular case, we, what, we, what is changing? It is 1 is changing to 0, AB is 0, 0 only for both the cases and C is 1. So the expression becomes A dash because it is 0, B dash and C because C is this particular thing, as simple as that. And for this green, what you see, see uh, what we see, uh, 0 to 1, so that means A has changed, B is 1, so B will come in its normal form, that is B. Then what has, uh, these two have not changed for the column, so B, C dash and D. So this is what the two adjacencies, what you can see very clearly here. And when we move to the second, uh, second place. So what these two adjacencies are already covered, these two adjacencies are called already covered. So what were left? Uh, this and this one were left. So we are covering them with the help of this is going to be one adjacency of 3 and 7 uh, because of I mean I cannot show one particular thing by two colors. So I have shown this as 3 I mean so 3 and 7 is one adjacency and this 3 and 7 is going what is uh, what you can see A is 0. So A dash B has changed, so the, no B, C and D, right? So A dash C D, whereas for this as well as this one, that is 11 and 3 also are adjacent in the rotational way. So we, what we get here, what has not changed in this particular case, C D has definitely not changed, but what we see here is A has changed and B, so this is going to be B dash C D. So what we see C D is consistent over here but B dash is uh, uh, coming out to be in this particular case. I mean do not think that CD is uh, common uh, and then it is going to create problem. No, it is perfectly all right, okay. I mean many a times this algebraic simplification can further be, uh, f further can be uh, reduced in the sense that A dash plus B dash can be put into one bracket and uh, CD can be done, but then we are not going to do because KMAP leaves such as this particular simplification only and this is where we uh, get our final design that is the, fi uh, uh, the we combine all the terms and we get our uh, uh, final function which needs to be which needs to be drawn okay for this particular case. So this is in nutshell what you can do with KMAP right but how to design the circuits okay okay now uh, this is the uh, in another example, I think one of the question which was asked to me uh, in the in uh, one of the by, by one of your uh, student was how KMAP can be used with don't care condition. Don't care conditions have been mentioned in your block. So uh, what we what I did was I created a KMAP for prime numbers up to value nine only. So we leave eleven and thirteen. So we are designing a circuit which does. For single digit, for single digit uh, dec uh, decimal number, it tries to find the value of KMAP. Now the truth table in that particular case will be drawn up to 9 only, right? The value 9 and 10 is you do not need and that is where the do not care starts. So the for how it is going to be there? So for 2 is a prime number, right? 3 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number, 7 is a prime number, but thereafter 
right? So we have drawn 8 and 9 are not prime, but 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 6, 15. We are not, we don't have to care about these values. Why we don't have to care about these values? Because our circuit is not trying to address them. So in those cases, when your circuit is not trying to address those values, we put an x there. Now, remember one particular thing, all ones which we have put, we have to cover. Right? We have to cover means some adjacency or some expression, uh, some Boolean term should cover that particular function. But for x, we are not required, not determined, I mean we are not required to cover all x, but we should take all those x which help us in reducing the number of gates. Right? So we will use those. So for example, these two x are, and these two ones are very nicely coming, gelling into one adjacency of four. So we will use them as one particular adjacency, right? In the previous case, it was not happening. So now you see, now this becomes one adjacency. As soon as this four becomes one adjacency, what, what has not changed in this particular case? B and D. So BD is, so only term now is BD. So we have, we are able to reduce the terms for uh, the number of variables in the terms further. Right? So that is the advantages of using don't care condition. Okay? And finally, over here also we have done uh, 1, 1 and xx and these two x are not covered, we are not bothered about those. Right? But all ones are covered, that is what our objective was. So once again, for these two ones and these two x's, what we get? B dash C in this particular case. You can see that is what, what has not changed is C in this particular case and over here. Uh, this for the here and here it is b dash. So what we see with the use of don't care condition, it further simplifies the design, right? If we have don't care condition in that particular case and don't care condition where all the x need not be covered, like we need to cover all the ones when we are dealing with normal circuits without don't care condition. So this was another example now how to draw circuit. So what we have covered so far is that we can draw, we can, we can create the Boolean function. But how a Boolean function will be converted to equivalent circuit diagram. So now this is what f equals to a b bar c bar plus a b bar c plus a bar b. Suppose this is my function which is to be drawn, right? So how we draw it? Okay, it simply is that a, B and C, these are the three inputs which we have, A, B and C. A will go through an inversion because that is how A bar will come, B will also go through inversion, right? So gates are used, what gates we are using? Not and and OR gate for drawing this particular circuit. So what we get? A, B bar, C, that is what we want. So by inverting we get A bar, by inverting we get B bar, what we, by inverting we get C bar. Now in this particular case, three inputs, A, A is coming directly what you can see, A is coming directly to this particular gate, B bar, B bar is coming to this particular circuit and C bar. So inversion and C bar. So output of this is, this gate is going to be A, B bar, C bar. These bars are separate, no combined bar. Okay. In this particular circuit, B bar is coming, okay. A is coming directly, okay, and C is coming straight. So what we get A B bar C in this particular AND gate. A dot B B bar dot C. So this is how if our circuit, if we want to draw uh, the circuit for this particular term, we, we draw it very simply. And then plus means we need to pass them through OR gate. Dots mean we need to pass them through AND gates. Bar means we need to simply invert them. That's it. So this is as simple as this, drawing circuit using AND or NOT gates. Okay, nothing very complex. You can easily do it and enjoy it. But what happens in computers when we are trying to uh, design circuits with the help of semiconductor technology, drawing three different kinds of gate becomes sometimes very cumbersome. So what we need, we need a gate which is functionally complete by through which we can draw all the circuits and one of the combination of those gates is AND or NOT. So if any gate which can draw, which, which we can use to draw AND or NOT stuff, 
then that particular gate can be utilized for drawing any kind of circuit. So that is what we mean by functionally complete set of gates. And what we are once again trying to say, those gates which can be utilized. So now only NAND gate, suppose NAND gate is functionally complete set of, uh, of gates, it, it can be used to draw an AND or not, then it can be utilized for drawing any circuit and only one kind of fabrication will be needed when we are drawing, uh, when we are creating the chips. Right. So that is the advantage of functionally complete set of gates. Although most of the time we ask you to draw circuit with the help of uh, NOT and and OR gate together because together three of them put together are functionally complete. Not one is functionally complete but can we draw? So let us see whether NAND is functionally complete or not. If something has to be functionally complete, a gate has to be functionally complete, then it should be able to, we should be able to create OR from it, we should be able to create AND from it and we should be able to create OR from it and rest NAND, NOR, uh, ZOR, all can be created with the help of these gates only. Okay. So let us look into how NAND can be utilized to create NOT. So for simple, as simple as a, that, you pass A from both the inputs and what you will get? A, NAND, A and for the, uh, if you can check up the truth table of NAND, in the case of NAND, what was there? For 0, 0, we will get 1, right? So if A is 0, this is 0, 0, we will get a 1, so inversion. If A is 1, what we will get? 1, 1, 1, 1 for NAND is going to be 0. So what we are going to get? 0 in this particular case, right? Similarly, for A equals to A plus B, so that is, suppose we are drawing it for A plus B, then we use something called De Morgan's law. And De Morgan's law, I will explain it a little bit later, but De Morgan's law is very, I mean, in fact, if you really want to understand this particular circuit, you need to understand De Morgan's law. And De Morgan's law say that negation of, negation of, suppose I am negating A and B, I am negating it, then it is equivalent to A prime, that is A negation plus B negation, A and B whole negation is equivalent to A negation and B negation. Now in this particular case, if we apply the same logic, that is A prime, uh, that is negation of A and negation of B whole negation will give us A negation, A prime uh, and negation of that and B prime negation of that plus plus is going to come in between. So A prime prime becomes A, B prime B prime becomes B. Now this is what you have to see in your material or any of the uh, additional reference material. Okay. So this is what you, you find over here. Invert it twice, you will get A prime, B prime and then once again pass through inversion uh, uh, that is NAND gate which will give me an expression A prime, B prime, whole prime which is equivalent to A plus B. So this is this part you can refer to further reading, okay. And for the case of ZOR, once again, uh, for the case of when you want to represent A and B itself, then what you need to do, pass it through NAND, you get NAND and then negate that NAND value, you will get the AND value. So this is very, very direct, okay. So this is the way, like what is the purpose? The purpose is very simply that we are trying to create a functionally uh, see that NAND is functionally complete set of gates and it can be used to draw any of the circuits. Okay. Now I want to draw, uh, now this is a typical example where we have used summation uh, kind of representation for the, instead of truth table, we have used summation and these are the kinds of questions which are normally asked in your exam that you are given. Suppose there is a function ABC where 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 7. So these are the decimal equivalent values, have value 1 and this is summation of that means only these uh, values will be, that means plus, okay. So all these values will be uh, having a value 1, okay. So now if I can map this into a truth table, there is no, uh, I mean we can directly map this to uh, the K map rather than mapping it into a truth table and what you see in this particular case, now we have three variables, so we are mapping A in on this side and BC on that side. Now once again you can draw the circuit 0, 1, 
2 and 3. You can see the 2 is this side and 3 is on that side. The same logic we are using 4, 5, 6 and 7. Now 1 is here, 2 is here, right, 2 is here, 3 is here, 4, 5, 7. So 4, 5 and 7. Okay, and then we draw the equivalent circuit. Now if I want to draw the equivalent circuit, first is the these four, right? So first adjacency is these four. And if I see it, so two variable will be reduced. So what has not changed between these two? C, right? So this is C. So my function is C plus AB prime, which is going to be, uh, I think AB prime should be this, okay? and a dash prime b, this should be this. So you can refer to, you can draw this particular function. But this function we need to draw with the help of, this is a, this is an OR gate, right? This is a inversion gate, this is an OR gate, a and b. So we have one AND gate, two AND gate, two OR gates and two inverter. So if I want to draw this. but as the functionally complete set of gate is NAND, so we will draw this with the help of NAND. How do we draw the, with, this, with the help of NAND? We create inversion, that is negation of this particular term double, and negation of that particular term. It's going to be the same. Negation of negation is going to be same. For example, if value A, right? A negation and uh, further negation is going to, A negation is zero. Suppose A is 1, so its negation will be 0 and negation of once again taking the negation of 0 is going to give us 1. So this logic has been used in this particular case. And what we use? De Morgan's law as I stated, A plus B whole prime, okay, if I, this I am representing with the help of negation equals to A prime which is uh, negation of A and B prime. So you can easily uh, see this, the whole thing has been done with the help of this. So C, we get C prime, A B prime whole prime, A dash B prime whole prime and the there is a negation, still negation overall. This is a typical NAND, NAND of, so, so the overall negation represent NAND of, right? Overall negation, this is negation of all the uh, AND terms and negation of it is basically NAND. So NAND of now C prime is simply NAND of C, right? NAND of C basically we can pass through, we, we can either assume it to be C prime or just I uh, de demonstrated that in both the inputs we, of NAND gate we will pass C, okay? AB prime is NAND of AB prime, okay? This is NAND of this particular gate, okay? And this A, A prime B is NAND of this particular A prime B. So this is how you see uh, uh, that is the NAND is always represented. This is AND and when we put a prime, this is NAND, right? So this is how you get this values. And now we need to draw. So this function is equivalent to NAND of NAND of C, NAND of AB prime and NAND of A, A prime B. Now just to simplify, NAND of C is directly taken as C prime. So C prime and this is like that B prime and all those things we have drawn directly and they are passed through A, B prime, we get a NAND, A prime B, that is what NAND of A prime B. So we get the, the NAND of this. Don't confuse between prime here and bar, both are the same, right? Because uh, like in slide, it is very difficult to get a bar, so I am using a prime. But uh, you will find both the convention in different books, right? So this is how, please don't get confused. This means uh, negation only and prime also means, uh, that is bar also means negation. So finally, they all the three are passed to another NAND gate to get a function. So if you want to draw logic circuits, so how uh, through NAND gate, then you have to work slightly better, uh, more than that. First, get the function with the help of K-map, okay? So we got the function with the help of K-map. Then we took double prime of it, okay, right? And within the prime, what we got? Different NAND of C, then NAND of AB prime. So basically, you can directly see, we have to pass this from NAND gates to get the values in that particular sense, right? So NAND of C is C prime and NAND of AB prime like that. We, we can get the whole stuff, but only thing is we need to get the NAND of everything in that uh, creation. So this is how you can draw circuit through either AND or NOT gates or only through NAND gates, 
right? So this is the circuit drawing. So that, that was the second part. <coughs> now let us move on to the third and the final part. And this is adder circuit. Now this is very important for you. I mean, it's not, it does not mean the other portion was not important. Just understanding of other portion is equally important. But let's look into half adder. And this is the basic circuit which every computer must have. Okay, so half adder is basically it adds just two bits. It does not do anything more than that. Okay, and what truth table for this particular half adder should be? The truth table for this hard half adder will require just two K maps. One each for some bit and one for carry bit. And how it will, now this is only, uh, this. there are two inputs only, so A and B only. And what you can see, that some bit is 0, 1, 1, 0. Unfortunately, when you draw the K map for this, A on one side, B on another side, there will not be any adjacency, they will be just across. So what you will get, you will get the first term is going to be A prime B and second term is going to be, uh, that is, uh, a B prime. So that is how you will get A, A prime B plus A, A B prime for some bit. And look into the carry bit. So 0, 0 gives us some bit as 0, out carry bit 0. 0, 1 gives us some bit 1, carry bit 0. 1, 0 gives us some bit as 1, carry bit as 0. And 1 and 1, what does it give us? It gives us a some bit of 0, 1 plus 1 becomes 2, 2 in 1, 0. So some bit is going to be 0 and carry bit is going to be 1 in that particular case, right? So whenever you want to draw a circuit, first draw the truth table. That is very, very important. Once you draw the truth table, then perform the algebra, uh, the simplification using K map. K may, may, may not be applicable in all the cases, maybe algebraic simplification or so. You actually uh, this is just an example. We want you to be familiar with this. That is why we are giving you KMAP because it is the simplest of thing. Otherwise, uh, there are more techniques like uh, the, the Quinn Metlikowski method and so on and so forth. So you can uh, refer to those if you really are interested in this particular domain and want to go into the circuit designing and other kind of a thing. But circuit designing has moved a lot of steps ahead now and a lot of uh, programming is done in that. So we, let's not refer to that particular thing for the time being. But let's go to the, the uh, half header once again. And the half header, what does have a half header do? We get a carry bit, we get the sum bit. Okay, now carry bit is simple AND gate, right? So this is how your circuit will look like. So if uh, I'm adding X and Y if the bits, then AND it will give me some carry. And X, uh, the two AND gates for X bar Y and X Y bar, and if I pass through OR gate, it is going to give me the sum bit. You know what you have performed? You have performed addition a circuit. You have designed a circuit which can perform addition of two bits. All right, it looks good, but in reality, there is no addition of two bits. In, in fact, there is another uh, previous carrier, like whenever you are, uh, you are adding two uh, numbers, there is always a previous carry, right? So when you have previous carry, obviously you will have a different circuit for that. So if I want to do a full adder, right, that is called a full adder, which basically add three bits. And the three bits are the sum A bit, A bit and B bit and carry in bit, that is the previous carry bit, right? So the previous carry, so how it going to, be, how it's going to be? So sum bit is going to be in all this zero, zero. If the previous carry is 1, some bit is going to be 1, but no carry. This is 1 and 0, this is all right. In the case of 1, 1, it is 0 and 1. Some bit is 0 and the carry bit is 1, right? Once again here, no problem. Here, no problem. The similar way, like two bits are being added. Look into this combination, seventh, where three bits are added, right? Three ones are being added. So what we are going to get? 3, which is 1 and 1, right? So carry bit is going to be 1 in this particular case, which is higher, and 1. So this is the only case where we'll get 1 and 1 in both the cases as sum and carry. Now the next step, in the previous case, we did not draw the uh, K map because it was too simple. In this case, we draw the K map, okay? And what we get for the, for the, uh, for the sum bits, 
we have got a typical mosaic which where we cannot find any adjacency, right? So each min term, you can see each term which is appearing over here is the min term in case where the value is 1, right? So for, for example, ABC is going to be this particular one where A is 1, B is 1 and C is 1, right? So this is how you map all these min terms to equivalent uh, that is function which is some function is this particular, these th four min terms 1, 2, 3 and 4, okay? Whereas in the case of carry, in the case of carry we are getting three uh, adjacencies, right? Uh, one adjacency will be for 5 and 7, one adjacency will be for 6 and 7 and another adjacency will be for 3 and 7. So we will get 3 adjacencies and 3 particular term. You can try this particular thing out over there. For example, this is going to be B and C. C happens to be the carry in, right, in this particular case. So C happens to be the carry in, A is uh, one term and C is carry in, right. So you can get, you, you will find all these terms to be available over there. So you can easily add them, you can easily find the design, okay. And then you draw them, okay. So that is how your final output is going to be, okay. Now instead of A prime, B prime, we have X bar, Y bar. And in case of, in, in place of carry bit, we have P in this particular circuit. So that is the simple chain because these figures are uh, not physically drawn by uh, for the slides. So that's why this change is definitely there. You can refer to this particular chain, X, Y, P. You, so all these things, all these are actually AND gates, inverters we have not drawn just for simplification, right? And plus is the OR gate. Uh, no, uh, OR gate. So you can see there are four inputs coming to this particular OR gate and beyond that we would not like to go through, okay. And in this particular case we have very, very simple circuit. So BC like uh, uh, AB happens to be X and Y, right, and C happens to be P. So this is what you see and we get a carry bit in this particular thing. So it is very simple to draw the circuit, okay, full adder circuit. but so what we moved on so far, we went on from the gate, we moved to the design of combinational circuits and then we moved on to uh, the design of uh, like creation of the circuit with the help of AND or NOT as well as with the help of just NOR gate which happened to be functionally complete. But now let us move to another uh, full adder, uh, 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 another circuit which is designed with the help of full adder. And that is that makes the understanding slightly in more details. So this was like only one bit is added, but then our numbers are larger, right? So first we started with one bits, uh, right? Then we went, went on to adding three bits. So we added two bits, half adder, three bits, full adder. But now we want to do addition of a, let's say four digit number with another four digit. So this particular circuit of full ladder, so the full ladder circuit which we have drawn over there, now this is drawn with the help of box over here, okay. And what you see here is the modes, all right. So the mode, this is very interesting. What we have, this is an adder as well as subtractor circuit. And this adder and subtractor circuit is going to, going to add A as well as B, that is one or it will subtract B from A, that is going to be the second thing. Now look into this particular circuit, there is a carry in into the circuit and there is a carry out and importantly there is a overflow marker over here. And how the overflow is there? Suppose this bit addition, so carry into the side bit, if the carry into the sign bit and carry out of the sign bit, if both are same then there is no overflow. Right? So if both are either 1 or both are 0, output of ZOR gate is going to be 0. But if both are different, either this is 0 or that, uh, I mean one of them is 0, suppose this or, or this, then the output is going to be 1. So not only this circuit tells us about the addition, but it is giving us the overflow thing also. So you, can you see, the, from full adder we have designed this particular circuit full adder as well as how many full adders because we need to add four bit numbers so four full adders 
right? And how many ZOR gates? Four here and fifth one for determining the overflow condition. And can you see that how exact, how smartly it works? When we put C in as one, so what we have done, look into this when C in equals to zero is fine because in the case of ZOR gate, it will be simply like uh, the value will be passing as it is, okay? So the B is passed through the ZOR gate and if the if the mode that is C in is zero, so zero with whatever value it will be simply passing, right? If it is one, so it will be one. If it is zero, 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 it is going to be zero. So zero will be passed. So the number will be passed as it is. The B will be passed as zero, one, zero, one and result will be that is the sum will come out of here, some bits will come out of this particular case and carry will keep on moving forward. Okay, now I'll tell you the problem of this circuit also, but can you keep on moving forward? So the next next gate will work, then the next gate will work, then, and then the next gate will work. And that way the 4-bit addition will be done, just like way we do in normal addition of ours. But think in terms of when C in 1, right? In that particular case, what you will get is the complement value. Because if B is 1, right? If the B, so for example, B, uh, B1 is 1, so 1, 1 becomes for NOR gate or for ZOR gate, it is 0 and for 0, 1, it is 1. So for all these outputs will be complement of this particular number, okay? So what you can see, it's a 1's complement, okay? And when we add C in 1, it becomes 2's complement of 1, 0, 1, 0 plus 1. It will make 2's complement. So what we are actually adding is the 2's complement. In turn, what we are getting is A minus B. Because we converted B into 2's complement, we negated the B with the help of 2's complement and added into A. That is equivalent to A minus B. So this is another statement. You need to check it. You need to go through it once again. And this is how you are going to learn about it. Now there is a major drawback of this particular circuit. What? That C in first moves to this particular circuit. This particular circuit cannot perform till this, this circuit has fired. That means C out or C out of this circuit is available. Similarly, so by the time we will reach to this circuit, this must be performed, this must be performed and this must be performed. Well, now there are, uh, I mean, faster adders if you are interested. Uh, they, they call look ahead carry, right? So those carry, uh, look ahead carry adders are having, or well, they design uh, circuits to determine carry faster than this particular circuit. So the, you see, the electronics is a game of really logic. It's a game of logic and designing in a very, very systematic way and being very creative. And there is no limit for it. Okay, this is just one circuit adder subtractor circuit. If you want to know more, you can actually uh, learn a lot of things. There are lots of reference books available on this particular topic and the, the three, uh, three books which we have mentioned in our blogs are really, really useful for this kind of a uh, design. And you may, if you are interested in this, you will really enjoy, uh, you can go through those and you will really enjoy this particular uh, topic if you, uh, uh, if you really are interested in uh, the, uh, the, uh, the hardware side of the computer and the hardware design side of the computer. Well, finally check your progress. Please study the, uh, and draw the circuits of block one, unit three. Do all the check your progress given in those uh, blocks. And uh, there are number of assignments, uh, in fact, uh, not number of assignment, there is just one assignment which is available on your website. And you should go through the, the, that particular assignment, assignment and I think there will, uh, there will be some question which you can answer through that particular, uh, uh, through this particular presentation which I have given to you. Thank you so much, but please remember, practice is the only essence here. Relearning, learning this particular thing is very, very important. This is not a simple uh, concept, but with little effort, you will be mastering it and you will be really enjoying this particular concept. Thanks for being